Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Must see high school football players do something amazing to honor cops, going viral. Watching NFL players kneel for the national anthem sucks. All Republicans, and even some Democrats, can agree on that. What America wants to see more of is unity. That's what we need right now, without question. We need to stop disrespecting the flag, the troops, cops, and the country as a whole once and for all. Check out this unbelievably awesome gesture made by the Muscuta High School football team of Illinois to honor police officers. Per The Blaze, Athletic Director Scott Battis says the demonstration has been planned for weeks, and accidentally coincided with NFL players ramping up their protests after President Trump's criticism. We don't see anything but people, and I think that's the most important message that we've been able to send, he explained. It doesn't get any better than that. Pretty cool, right? Muscuta lost the game, 24-7, but honestly, who cares? It's just nice to see some unity for a change, isn't it? Will liberal networks even report on this story? What are the odds? Zero? Less than zero? Since they won't, you should. Spread this story like wildfire to let the left know we honor our heroes. After Puerto Rican mayor attacked him this morning, Trump struck back with ultimate vengeance. The Democratic Party is an evil machine. President Trump took to Twitter this Saturday to blast the San Juan mayor Carmen Yulan Cruz and called her nasty. Trump tweeted the following. The mayor of San Juan, who was very complimentary only a few days ago, has now been told by the Democrats that you must be nasty to Trump. Such poor leadership ability by the mayor of San Juan and others in Puerto Rico, who are not able to get their workers to help. Cruz responded to Trump's comments this morning telling Joy Reid on MSNBC, Actually, I was asking for help. I wasn't saying anything nasty about the president, but don't take my word for it. General Buchanan, a three-star general, has said as one of the first comments that he has made about the Puerto Rico situation that he doesn't have enough troops and he doesn't have enough equipment of what he needs to get the situation under control. White House social media director pointed out that she is putting on a show. It's not surprising that a Democratic-run island territory is blaming Trump for the disasters. It is run by Democrats. Share this to support our president and don't give a crap what the media says. The media is spinning the crap out of this stuff and we need to get Americans good information. Sarah Huckabee Sanders just joked lying media Trump attacks with six words that have Trump sharing. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders is known for her wit and class when dealing with attacks on President Trump from journalists. On Saturday she again did not disappoint, lashing out at a Washington Post article that claimed President Trump ignored the humanitarian crisis in Puerto Rico to play golf at his resort in Bedminster. Sarah Sanders tweeted six words. WP story on PR is false. The Post claimed the president went dark from Thursday, before his Alabama rally on Friday, to the following Tuesday, only speaking to acting Homeland Security Secretary Elaine Duke briefly on Friday. Sarah Huckabee Sanders set them straight the great thing about Twitter, which President Trump has always said, is that he and his administration can deliver messages personally to correct media falsehoods. President Trump is again at this Bedminster resort this Saturday and will be monitoring the relief efforts in Puerto Rico very closely, with scheduled phone calls to head administrators such as FEMA Director Brock Long, Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Roslo, Puerto Rico Resident Commissioner Jennifer Gonzalez Colon and the Governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands, Kenneth Mapp. Tired of the MSM dishonesty? Let's get Sarah Sanders' correction out there by sharing this 100,000 times. H. T. The Hill
football is going to hell watch these high school band dancers dress as strippers on football field. The Miami Northwestern High Golden Girls dress like strippers in this video going viral. The group introduced a new look at a recent high school football game. Don't get me wrong. As one gentleman points out in the article. What do you think? Are the outfits too inappropriate for high school? Sound off below. It seems like it'd be a cold day in hell before most people would let their kids dress like that for a dance routine. Nothing against these girls, just their parents. Spread this on social media if y'all agree and have a wonderful Saturday. Kaepernick is done. Anti-American Nut donated thousands to celebrate famous cop killer. Currently unemployed former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick is the reason players kneel on the sidelines today. He was the originator of the whole anti-American movement. Kaepernick's whole stance, no pun intended, began as a way to shed light on police brutality, even though in far more instances than not cops are proven to have just cause to do what they do when people don't listen. Colin was seen last season wearing socks depicting police officers as pigs. So, you know exactly where he stands. In fact, he even stated that he took a knee as a way to disrespect America and the flag. Now we're learning that Cap donated $25,000 to a group that honors a famous cop killer. Does the name Masata Shocker ring a bell? Shocker is a domestic terrorist, murderer, race hustler and Black Panther member who fled to Cuba after taking New Jersey State Trooper Werner Forster's life in 1973. When she fled, she was on the FBI's most wanted list. Per Daily Mail, Colin Kaepernick's $25,000 donation to a charitable group honoring a convicted cop killer has been revealed. Kaepernick's foundation made the donation to Chicago-based Asada's Daughters, named after former Black Liberation Army member Asada Shocker in April as part of a $1 million charitable pledge. Shocker was convicted of first-degree murder in the 1973 shooting death of New Jersey State Trooper Werner Forster and sentenced to life in prison, but staged a daring jailbreak and now lives as a fugitive in Cuba. Share this with everyone you know to get the truth out about anti-American, cop-hating Colin Kaepernick. Everyone needs to know. H.T. B.P.R. NFL megastar viciously attacks President Trump, says seven words nobody ever should. Green Bay Packers superstar Aaron Rodgers might go down as one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. The numbers are there to back him up, plus he's got a Super Bowl victory under his belt. Rodgers is also a world-class ladies' man, having dated actress Olivia Munn and, allegedly, model Kelly Rohrbach, who played CJ in Baywatch. The thing is, if Rogers keeps up his protesting shenanigans on the sidelines on Sundays, that is what he will be remembered for. Not a good look, bro. Before their Thursday night game against the Chicago Bears, Aaron and the Packers asked fans in the stands to link arms as a show of unity with the team, and against President Trump. It didn't go over well. The whole thing was a disaster, as most people refused to paw or bait shows you what kind of pull the QB really has. During a presser recently, Rogers attacked Trump over the NFL protests, saying, this is about something bigger than that. An invitation to show unity in the face of some divisiveness from the top in this country. Wow. He wasn't done, though. It's never been about the national anthem, it's never been about the military, Rogers said of the protests. We're all patriotic in the locker room, we love our troops. This is about something bigger than that, an invitation to show unity in the face of some divisiveness from the top in this country. Sure, Aaron. We believe you, wink. Keep disrespecting America and the president, who won Wisconsin, by the way, and see what happens to ratings and NFL revenue. It won't be good for players, that much is certain. H.T., Gateway Pundit the Hill.
Trump just took down another Obama executive order with four words that left Obama crying on the floor. President Trump has been working hard to cut waste in the federal government. A lot of the time that means revoking former President Barack Obama's executive orders. On Friday President Trump just ended Obama's 2009 order to create the National Council on Federal Labor Management Relations, saying in a statement. The United States government should spend tax dollars responsibly, efficiently, and in the public interest. Four words Obama probably has never heard before, responsibly, efficiently, and in the public interest. He continued. The National Council on Federal Labor Management Relations have consumed considerable managerial time and taxpayer resources, but they have not fulfilled their goal of promoting collaboration in the federal workforce. And then finally, public expenditures on the council and related forums have produced few benefits to the public, and they should, therefore, be discontinued. That's how it's done, people. Obama was into creating councils with fancy names that seemed like they were being helpful but really just ended up being more wasteful bureaucratic nonsense. President Trump can see through the BS. The council was created with the intent of improving relationships and cohesion between labor unions and federal managers. According to the Washington Times, the unions said it was a venue to voice their concerns, while critics claim that it gave unions undue influence over federal policy. Either way, it's gone now, and President Trump can start moving that money into new and better ways to make America great again. H.T. Washington Times Eric Trump just got on Hannity and said the one thing about Trump liberals didn't want him to say. President Trump has had another big week of controversy after criticizing NFL players for kneeling during the national anthem before games on Sunday and Monday. Eric Trump got on Hannity Friday to defend his father, and said something all progressives are going to hate. One thing I've always said about my father is he will fight for this country. This is another great example of him fighting for this country. It's not just fighting for lower taxes, or fighting for better health care, or fighting to have the best military, he's fighting for something that means a tremendous amount to this nation. That's right, folks. President Trump is a fighter. He doesn't back down. When he sees something he thinks is wrong, he says it. He loves this country and is ready to help build its infrastructure and services, but he recognizes that our symbols and traditions are also important to national unity and cohesion and he's going to fight for that too. Eric Trump continued. That's the American flag. That's patriotism. There's plenty of time for a protest, all right? Let's keep the one-minute time that it takes to sing the national anthem, keep it sacred. There's another 23 hours and 59 minutes in the day, keep that minute sacred. We certainly have problems in this country, but we are so blessed on a relative basis, and we should stand and celebrate that. And when that's over we can talk about our differences and that's healthy. But I'm proud of, my father, taking a stand and fighting for this country. Boom baby. Progressives hate it when patriots stand up for what they believe in and defend American values. But President Trump is going to do just that.